You may be asking yourself, what is that abomination he has in front of him? Well, for me, this is not an abomination. In fact, this is one neat little rifle from CZ. This is a CZ 600 Trail. The CZ 600 Trail comes in two calibers, 223 and 7.62 by 39. Again, you're gonna ask yourself, why only two calibers and why is it so small? Well, this gun itself has a collapsible PDW style stock. So it gets very small with a button with different positions. And you'll see on this, I do have a very large scope attached for it, which, you know, if I was gonna pick a scope to rest on this rifle forever, it's probably not gonna be this larger primary arms SLX 3 to 18 and probably something smaller from them, like a one to 10 or a one to eight, or even like a two to 10, two to 15 possibly. But I went with this because today I'm gonna accuracy test this rifle because I've seen mixed reviews on the internet as far as how these shoot. And I personally have a bunch of different ammos and I wanna test it out. So with this size and how it collapses is very small. Now you could fit this in a backcountry backpack and literally zip it. I have a Mystery Ranch or even a Stone Glacier pack, which is R7 and it fits in there very easily. In addition to that, on the underseat storage, I have my F-250, it also fits in there very easily because it collapses. Now again, you're gonna ask yourself, my AR-15 can do that because this model here is a 223. Most ARs do not collapse. And in fact, if you want them to collapse, you gotta put a law tactical folder on them or get some for a piston gun that does not have a buffer system that collapses. And those guns themselves are generally $2,000 or more. And this rifle itself, I scooped it up for about a thousand bucks. MSRP is 1079 on these, so they're very reasonable and they feel very, very well made. Again, it has a PDW style stock that collapses with a button on the back and has different positions. Now, as you take it in, you can shorten up your length of pull. However, it doesn't lock when you pull it out, which I don't care for. And I'm not really sure why that's the case, but again, it does collapse and has different positions. So you can shorten up length of pull for yourself and it makes it fairly easy. We're all the way in. And in fact, the bolt will still run with the stock completely collapsed if you needed it to. So all the way out, it fits good for me and I get good eye relief and everything I need with this full length Picatinny rail that goes all the way across on the top. I won't say it's completely seamless from let's say the hand guard up on the front back to the aluminum action they use on here. However, it is well fitted and there's plenty of room on here for mounting an optic that you want, okay? So at, from three to 18 power on the scope, I have no issues whatsoever with eye relief. And you'll notice too, I have a small cheek piece that's built into the back here on this PDW stock that is actually pretty well made. You'd think it's flimsy, but it's really not. It's actually very stiff. And then the butt pad back here is rubberized with a good texture on the back, a little pick rail on there. So if you want to mount possibly something like a uh, monopod on the back, you could. On the rear end here, you have a QD cup on the stock and you'll see up here on the front, it's all M-lock. On here, I have mounted a pick rail to mount this bipod on the front to, for accuracy testing today, but you could also mount QD cups up here as well for the rifle and that would be fairly easy. Very solid rifle. I noticed no wobble or wiggle whatsoever in it. It is a heavier profile, cold hammer forged, 16.2 inch barrel that is threaded on the front as well. So if you wanted to add a suppressor, if you wanted to add some form of muzzle device on the front, you could do that. And what's nice too with a bolt gun versus an AR platform, no gas tuning needs to be done when you add a suppressor. So on or off, it really doesn't make a difference and you'll be able to run that bolt action very easily. So a few things that I look for in particular with a bolt action rifle. I want a smooth running action a good trigger, and it's accurate, okay? Two out of the three on the bench here have been accomplished. It has an excellent two-stage trigger. The best thing I could compare this two-stage trigger on this rifle to is if you're familiar with Geisley's two-stage triggers, the trigger on this rifle is better than those. So if you like the AR Geisley two-stage triggers, the CZ600 Trail has a better two-stage trigger than those are, and it's user adjustable on the bottom with an Allen key. So very, very nice. Now this action is a little bit different than most bolt actions. What I mean by that is how the ejector actually works. Now a lot of them, the plunger per se, has spring tension under it. And so ultimately what happens is it claws onto it. And as you lift the bolt and pull it out, it then will flick it out because that plunger pushes that round out. Now this one, as you pull this bolt back and you go all the way to the rear, it ultimately starts to push 
the ejector and the plunger out so it can spit that round out. So very similar in some way, shape or form to how most striker fire pistols work to as the slide comes back, it hits basically an ejector on there and it pushes it out. So very similar to that. I have experienced no issues whatsoever in feeding, no issues whatsoever in ejections and they're both very, very strong and feeds very well. Accuracy wise, I can't speak on it yet because I wanted to mount up a high power scope so that I can actually see how accurate I can be with this rifle. For me, this rifle fits a role of something that at our farm here, I could keep underneath the back seat of my truck or take it even in a big tractor and it's small. And then if a coyote pops out in that field and I can take care of a coyote at the time, I can. So what I'm gonna do, I have some Nosler Barmageddon ammunition. I'm gonna shoot through this. Sierra Match King stuff, Federal Gold Medal Match, uh, Hornady Match, a bunch of different 223 ammos that I'm gonna shoot through this and see how it does for accuracy testing. And most importantly, I wanna see how it does with hunting ammunition because as a trail model, I really think that's what they're going for with this rifle. It's almost like a smaller hunting rifle versus a, let's say, tactical defensive use rifle because in my opinion, an AR platform will do a much better job than this for defensive purposes. But for hunting purposes, this fills a niche. And one last thing I don't want to forget to cover is everything on this rifle for the most part is ambidextrous. Granted, the bolt handle is not, that is not changeable, but you know, the button to move your PDW style stock in and out is your safety selector switch is a lot like an AR-15. That is ambi on both sides. And as well as with that being said, is your magazine release button is ambi. You can use it on either side and it works really, really well. The magazines themselves, this is compatible with AR mags. I've used PMAGs in this and also the included 10 rounder that comes from CZ. Uh, it, overall though, they slide in there, lock in well, and the rifle build quality is absolutely excellent. If you're familiar with CZ stuff, that should be no surprise to you. In addition to that, good build quality, good value, and generally speaking, good accuracy. So we've talked about this rifle a bunch. Let's get out on the range and see how it shoots. We're set up now at 100 yards. We're gonna shoot the CZ 600 trail chambered in 223 for groups. The very first ammo I wanna shoot out of it after a rough zero with some cellular bell at 77 grain, I'm gonna shoot Nosler Barmageddon. This is 62 grain because again, like I said, for me, this gun would be a sweet little varmint rifle just to sling around in the tractor or inside the, you know, the backseat of my truck or something like that out here on the farm. So let's start off with Nosler Varmageddon. Next up, we're gonna shoot Federal Gold Metal Match. This is gonna be a 73 grain. These are burger bullets. Again, this is Federal Gold Metal Match. You'll notice too, with this one, I'm actually gonna end up using a Magpul P-Mag. 20 rounder out of here, the first one was the CZ mag. Works well, uh, let's see how this Magpul one does. Got <laughs> take it off from me here. Next ammo is going to be Federal Gold Metal. This is a 69 grain Sierra Match King. Again, I'm gonna shoot this one out of a Magpul P-Mag. So that first gold metal match, that was a burger bullet. This is gonna be a Sierra Match King.
Last group is going to be Hornady Match. This is a 73 grain ELDM bullet. Down here at the target, uh, you'll notice that the groups that were shot, I'll explain all of them to you what they are. Um, none of them, looking at the target at the very beginning, are all that impressive. However, with that being said, this rifle does not have a sub MOA guarantee or anything like that. Um, the groups are all about inch and a half, I would say, consistently with all good ammos, which is good to see. Is it an accurate enough ammo for me personally for a varmint rifle? Probably not. But for a lot of folks, it would be accurate enough for a Coyote rifle at 100 yards, 200 yards, it's gonna be accurate enough. But let's get into the groups. Nosler Varmageddon, that's this up here. Um, I actually shot four shots out of that because I was trying to figure out what was going on because I had two up here and then this, and then I had another one on that four shot that landed down here. So we're talking about like a two inch group on that because ultimately it's taken up, you know, four squares. Over here, this is gonna be Federal Gold Medal Match. This is going to be your burger bullet, 173 grain stuff, about an inch and a half group here. With that down here, this again, this is gonna be Federal Gold Medal Match, about a two inch group on that, maybe a touch over in fact. That's gonna be a 69 grain Sierra Match King. This right here, this is going to be Hornady. This is your Hornady Match, 73 grain ELD bullet. So that's about an inch and a half, about two inch group. And then up here, what you're looking at is going to be Cellier and Bellet, 77 grain OTM. So that stuff's about an inch and a half, two inch group. So what you can see for us with this rifle, sample size of one, about inch and a half, two inch groups for the rifle, good bag, good rest and everything like that. The CZ600 trail is not dubbed as a precision rig, it's dubbed as a trail rifle. As a trail rifle, this rifle accomplishes everything you want. As a precision rig, it falls short on a few things. Um, that being, the stock is wobbly, okay? It does not lock into place in any position other than fully extended, okay? Outside of that, accuracy-wise, it's about one inch to two inch type groups you can see with the ammos we tested. There could be an ammo out there that we did not test that will shoot better. However, the ones we did shoot are well regarded as being very accurate ammunitions in general for 223 stuff. I have an AR platform, the Mitchell Defense SOIDC, that will outshoot this gun every single day of the week and twice on Sunday. That rifle costs three times as much. For a thousand dollar rifle that is built as a trail rifle for compactness, that you could sling around inside a backpack for a backwoods type gun, sling it inside your gator or your side-by-side, -side, your tractor, whatever, for varmint, it will accomplish that 100%. I think it's an excellent rifle, it's well-made and functions very well. The only issues I really noticed while shooting this rifle is I had some instances, what I noticed is that I would load a magazine, rack the bolt, and not pick up any rounds. Whether that was shooter air or not, I'm really not thinking it was because it happened quite a few times. In fact, I was thinking that it was just me being an idiot. And Andrew did it and I did it, like I said, several times. And I'm not sure what was going on, whether the bolt had gotten just slightly forward so that when we went to rack it, because again, this bolt at the rear, it's kind of got like a spring to it, okay? And with that spring, so if you bring it back and you leave it open and you throw a magazine in it, the bolt's slightly forward, it's just over the round and you close it that's gonna be something you gotta take note of. So again, that could be shooter air, but it's also a bit of a design flaw, if we're gonna call it that, that I noticed. Overall though, you know, I think they made an excellent rifle. It's not the most accurate, however, it accomplishes a lot of things that this thing is mostly named for. And that's ultimately what we're looking for with the CZ600 Trail. So if you guys like this video, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe.